Psalm 32, the following lines, round 10 to 11. Before I read them, I'd just like to say why I've selected them. Um, a number of reasons. One is that in our world today, uh, there is a sense of foreboding, a sense that somehow we've slipped into a wall and we're going to be overwhelmed by that war. And a lot of the evidence is out there, what we're seeing between Russia and the Ukraine, and of course in the Middle East, but not just that, in Sudan and in many other countries where there's low intensity war taking place. And if you look at it on a global scale, are we or are we not actually in a, a world war where some of it appears an orthodox war and in other parts an asymmetric war? Or have we slipped into another war? And the difficulty always is because, as forever, all sides believe they have God on their side. Just like on, in the First World War, German soldiers had stamped on their bayonets, Gott mit uns, God with us. And on the Allied side, people saying onward Christian soldiers. And now in the Middle East, the ancient people of the Jewish faith believe they are blessed by their God. And on the other side, Muslims chant Allah. And even on our own little island, both traditional sides believe or believe God is on their side. When the people of Ulster signed the Ulster Covenant, God was called upon to bless the Ulster Covenant. When the Republicans took over the GPO in 1916, they also expressed in the name of Almighty God. And yet, you know, the faith we believe in doesn't concur with Because the faith we believe in as Christians is a universal faith, where we use the term Catholic. Although we are Presbyterian in a dissenting way in this church, we still use the word Catholic in our ordination service, as does the main PCI reference Catholic as an universal, and in the Anglican tradition. The word so I'd like to read to you which expresses the essence of what I'm trying to express from Psalm 32. God frustrates the designs of the nations, defeats the plans of the peoples. God's own designs shall stand forever, the plans of God's heart from age to age. Amen. Let us pray. As we gather in the name of the divine, let us worship with our eyes and ears and our fingertips. Let us love the world through heart and mind and body. We feed our eyes upon the mystery and revelation in the faces of our brothers and of our sisters. We seek to know the wistfulness of the very young 
and the very old. The wistfulness of people in all times of life. We seek to understand the shyness that sometimes mirrors arrogance, the fear behind pride, the tenderness behind clumsy strength, the anguish behind cruelty. All life flows into a great common life if we will only open our eyes to our companions. Loving and divine God, let us worship, not in bowing down, not with closed eyes and stopped ears. Let us worship with the opening of all the windows of our beings, with the full outstretching of our spirits. Life comes with singing and laughter, with tears and confiding, with a rising wave too great to be held in the mind and heart and body. To those who have fallen in love with life, let us worship and let us learn to love. Amen. And now may we stand in body and spirit as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And may we stay standing as we seek to.